Hello, I'm Paul Hartnell. I used to be in a band called Orbital, and we're here in my Brighton studio looking at the ARP Odyssey. I'm an owner of an original ARP 2600, which I've had since since the early 90s, really, and it's always been a favourite synth of mine. So when I've never had an Odyssey, so when this came out, I was kind of interested to see if it came anywhere close to to that, and was pleasantly surprised to find that it does actually. It's there. They are, they are very different synths in their architecture. They have different things going on, but there's, there's a lot of similarities, especially with all the, the sort of FM stuff, which is the, one of the reasons that I've always loved my 2600. But this has a kind of a little bit more instant gratification. It's a little bit less experimental than the 2600, which is definitely like a sort of huge semi-modular beast, whereas this is definitely geared towards you know, thinking about sort of musical content and that kind of thing. But unlike a lot of analog synths, it's got an awful lot of frequency modulation stuff that goes on, which makes it very kind of like super harmonic. And you get a lot of overtones and things like that, the sort of thing that you normally distort synths to, to get that kind of sound. So it is very particular compared to something like a Roland mono synth or a Moog synth which are both great synths in themselves but they don't have that kind of ARP FM kind of quality which is what I found this this to be all about you know once I got my head around it I started find, finding that I was getting it to sound very much like the 2600 and um, I've been using it quite a lot recently on my on my recent stuff another thing about the, the sort of ARP sound and this has got it which is really great is it's got a very sort of tight bottom end it can be really sort of fat but you always hear the sort of the bass end is really kind of deeply rooted within the track and kind of sits there in a very solid fashion unlike some synths that can be kind of big and unwieldy with their their bottom end and it kind of you lose some notes you gain some notes this just always sits there really tight in the mix with its bottom end which is great and i've also found um on some of the recent things i've been doing because of the complexity of the sort of the FM quality and the modulation possibilities, I've been it's been sort of sorting me out where I've had problems with simple lead lines. I've found that some of the kind of overtones and the harmonics that I'm getting from this have been really good for you know replacing some of the sort of you know, what could be quite a boring lead sound and just giving it a bit of life and something interesting. It's got quite a lot going on um, for for you know, what is seemingly such a small instrument. Okay, well, what I was just going to do was just run through a few kind of, you know, something, like a fast sequence just to kind of give you an idea of the sort of sounds that I come up with with it, you know. One thing it does do that's much better than um, 2600, which was an itch I've been wait years waiting to scratch, and that's pulse width modulation, which you cannot do on a 2600, not easily. Um, and this has got that, which you can so you can get that big fat kind of pulse width modulation sound straight away, which is great, and it is really good on this. There's a little example of it, but that's yeah, that's great. Oh, and it's got a great the drive as well, just being able to add just a little bit of that kind of analog distortion to it, it's really nice. And there we go with the kind of sort of more harmonic kind of elements that I enjoy out of it. Really good envelopes as well that 
and the, the tightness of the bottom end and the shape of the envelopes really lend themselves well to fast sequencing. There's a little example of the sort of thing you can do. One of the things that, that I do particularly like about this is one of the, it's a feature that's only on a few of my favourite sort of synths, and that is the ability to be able to do all the kind of modulation to a second oscillator, but have instead of having it go out of tune when, when you do it like that to be able to sync the oscillator first to the one that's going to be modulating it so that you can do all this stuff and it doesn't go out of tune, it just sort of becomes more harmonic and, and interesting. <laughs> 